began in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, live in our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I will sing of steadfast love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will make music. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing of steadfast love and justice to you, O Lord. I will make music.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our epistle reading, taken from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and the God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in the name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And... If the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our Alleluia verse. Trusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much, enter in the joy of your master. And he who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents here. I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. 
You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master, master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I had not sown and gather where I scattered no seed? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given. He will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And they cast and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. We boldly confess our faith. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue singing stanzas one, two, and three. One, two, and three of our hymn of the day.
and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I see in our service we did not print the children's message, which, you know, we're a little light on kids with the Morningside Parade and such, but before you guys leave, I do have suckers, so got to get rid of those suckers, so I'll get that to you. Risky giving or risky living. If you've uh, been able to keep up with the devotions that we have in the Red Letter Challenge, you can see that this particular week is on giving, which is always a pertinent topic. You know, it occurs to me that what Christ is talking about isn't isn't really so much money. Yeah, yeah, money, but a little bigger than that. You know what? You know what this time of the year is, right? This is the season of graduations, which brings the inevitable conundrum, the question for friends and for family, and you know what that question is when you have a graduate. Are you guys coming to the graduation party or not, right? A simple yay or nay. I mean, how is, this per how is a person supposed to plan if you don't know how many people are coming? Now, I know the answer and so do you. The answer is just cook way more food than you need and hopefully that's enough. And it always is, isn't it? But you know, there's a bigger issue here. That's our society. You see, it's hard to get from people a commitment, even from family members. Nobody wants to be pinned down because, well, you know, once you actually commit to something, then it's an obligation. I mean, you don't know. Maybe something else will come up. Indecisiveness. It's actually kind of a common problem in our society today. And let me assure you, it was a problem during the generation of Jesus as well. It's, <laughs> it's the very issue I face when I'm trying to clean my garage or my Shed, You know, I, I go in there and I look and I think, oh man, half this stuff is junk. I just don't know which half. Because about the time I throw something away, that's exactly when I'll need it, right? And so like you, I sit there and I say, should I keep it or should I get rid of it? In a bigger picture, it's, should I commit to something, or should I wait? Should I be all in, or should I kind of hedge my bets? You know, it's risky business, folks, being all in, isn't it? It's risky business committing ourselves, our time, talents, our money, because you just don't know. That's really what our parable this evening is all about. We call it the parable of talents. The message of Christ is clear. What he is saying is he wants everything. He wants all of you. He wants a total commitment. You see, Jesus Christ really is coming back. And we need to think about that. I mean, these are what these devotions are really. I know they're talking about money, but it's not talking about money. It's talking about your heart, your soul, your time, everything. What are we doing? We need to be ready when Christ comes back with all our time and even with all our money. Instead of passively sitting around, staring into the horizon and just enjoying our life 
while eating moon pies. We need to jump into action, take kingdom risks, live our lives with excellence. In other words, go the extra mile, fulfill that commitment, all in for Jesus. That's, that's really what he's teaching in Matthew here. He's saying in Matthew 25, he wants every ounce of you and me. He wants us to commit. He doesn't want inactivity. He doesn't want idleness. But I tell you, by the grace of God and the power and the work of the Holy Spirit, we can be that. We can put our everything on the line. We can make a significant impact on the world. You know, to those who don't fully trust Jesus Christ, living like a Christian, well, I suppose it seems a little foolish, but if nothing else, it seems like risky business. And I suppose if you don't really trust Jesus, it is. We will we'll care more than other people think is wise. In fact, we'll risk more than other people think is safe. We'll give more than other people think is sensible. Let's dig just a little bit deeper in that Matthew 25 passage. These are Jesus' red letters recorded in Matthew 25. And he starts by saying, God's kingdom will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents, to another two, and then finally to another one talent. And then he went away. Now, when I was younger, I used to hear that thing, hmm, talents, which by the way is more of an ESV, English Standard Version translation. I think King James probably does too. What, what I used to think is, well, that must be like, you know, the ability to throw a baseball or shoot a basketball or just being a handy person, a talent, right? Yeah, and that would be a talent. You are right. But in this context, if we read it correctly in the Greek, we find that a talent, think of it more as a bag of gold. In fact, when the master gave five talents, some Bible commentaries say that's like, that's like 80 years worth of salary for the common laborer. Two talents would be like two of these bags of gold. That, that would be almost like 32 years of salary. And even one talent, which, you know, that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's 16 years worth of salary for the common worker of that day. And so I guess my point is, these are large amounts. I don't know who this master is, but he's got a couple bucks, you know what I'm saying? And he gives to these people, and he wants them to manage them wisely. You get the, the analogy. It's like what God gives to us, too. But I do think there's a lesson here. Why would God give one a bunch, one a, a fair amount, and then one not quite as much? I don't know, but it does teach us that God does not give everybody equal amounts. What he does is he gives everybody varying amounts, but I do want you to know he gives everybody some. There, there's nobody out there who doesn't have any blessings of God. And I suppose this issue does cause us a couple of issues initially. On one hand, we are so prone to play the, we're at least tempted to play the comparison game, right? And what I mean by that is gripe about our situation. It's like, oh, I'm not as good as that person, or right? I'm not as gifted as that person, or I don't have as much as this person. But that's not what God is looking at. God's given you what he's given you. He just expects you to use what he's given you to his glory. In fact, think of it this way. Dear friends, your life 
is a gift from God. And what you do with your life, well, that's your gift to God. So think about these servants. How well did these three servants manage their master's resources? Jesus tells us to the one who was given five, he went out and put that money to work. We're not told how. My guess is he did not invest it in the last two years in the stock market. I don't know what he did, but whatever he did, he doubled it. That's great. The second, the same amount. He didn't make as much, but he didn't have as much, but he used it to its fullest potential. And then the third one digs a hole in the ground and he buries his master's money. After a time, the master comes back. We're not even told exactly how much, but the master comes back and he wants to settle his accounts with the servants. And the first one who was given five talents comes forward and says, Master, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I've gained five more talents. You can almost sense an urgency in that guy's voice, can't you? He's excited. He's like, hey, look. Look what I did. He did well. In fact, that's what the master says. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will put you in charge of much. Enter into the master's man joy. Well, that's good for the first one. The second one steps forward in Matthew 25. And, and he says, Master, you've entrusted me with two talents, and look what I've done. I have produced double, right? He's got two more talents, and the master replies again, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into your master's joy. Or the ESV would say, Enter into the joy of of your master. We, we don't know 100% what, what that means, okay? I mean, we got, we got some theories. Biblical scholars, they think that basically it means use God's gifts to his glory, and maybe in the afterlife there's, there's something that's coming our way. We don't know. Third servant comes forward, and you know the story. He's not like the first two. He comes forward. He did not live all in. The first two, you got to think they were all in. They weren't afraid. They just went for it. He says, Master, I know you're a hard man. You harvest where you have not sown. You gather where you have not scattered seed. And so I was afraid. And I hid your talent in the ground. Here's what you gave me. I think you and I can also relate to that, right? We're kind of conservative by nature. We don't want to squander it. He didn't even try. He didn't even use the gifts that he was given. No, he didn't squander it. He didn't waste it on drugs and partying and prostitutes and gambling. In fact, he did return the gift, 100%, what he was originally given. But notice the master's response. You wicked servant. In fact, other translations would say, you lazy servant. He says, you know, I harvest where I do not sow. You know that I gather where I do not reap. He says, the least you could have done is taken it and put it on account in the bank. And then I could have at least got my interest back when I came. And what happened to the guy? Well, it was taken away. All of it. Taken away and given to the one who had ten talents. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and thrown that, throw that worthless servant into the outer darkness 
where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's a, this is actually a pretty tough parable. Because what is this really saying? When you're, tra- when you're trying to figure out a parable, by the way, it's like a wheel. There's a hub and a bunch of spokes. Don't get lost on the spokes. In other words, you know, don't try to figure out every word of the parable. I don't know what the outer darkness is. I don't know what the weeping and gnashing of teeth is. In other portions of scripture, that's a reference to hell. I don't know. But I think the point is clear. The master expects the servants to actually use the gifts that are given, and those who choose not to are saying, I don't trust enough. And they are punished. Consequently, this is actually the classic case of use it or lose it. In the end, everything was taken from him, and he is cast to the outer darkness. Which I guess, if we are to look at other portions of Scripture, this means he ended up in hell. Jesus calls him wicked, worthless, because he did not trust God enough to be all in. I guess every person, including me and you, has two options. Either we can live our lives for Jesus Christ. We can be all in Christians. We can invest everything in God and trust Him and Him only. Or we can just not. And I, and I think the point of this parable is really to ask every one of us. Certainly as you read the Red Letter book, you're challenged. That's why it's called the Red Letter Challenge. You challenged, who are you living for today? Jesus does not say in Scripture that kingdom living is easy. I think what we learn from Scripture is, you know, in the eyes of people, and I suppose we could look at 1 Corinthians and look at all that to see the foolishness, it's risky, isn't it? It's risky living in God's kingdom. David had no guarantee when he faced Goliath that he was going to win. He wasn't guaranteed that. Queen Esther, she had no guarantee when she went and talked to King Xerxes that she wouldn't be killed. She should have been. Queens don't just go and talk to the king unannounced like her. She lived. Mary Did Mother Mary, the Virgin, actually know what she was getting into? Of course not. But she was all in. She said, all right. May it be as you have said. That's her response in Luke chapter 1. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And what happens when you don't take risks. Well, think of ancient Israel. Remember when the ten spies went into the land of Canaan, the land of milk and honey? Two came back and they said, we can do it. Ten came back and said, eh, I don't think so. Those guys look really big. In fact, we look like grasshoppers in the eyes of those people. They weren't going to take a risk. And they said no. And what did they end up having to do? They end up wandering for 40 years and everybody of that generation dies. The point, my friends, is God is calling you and I in this challenge to take a risk, to live live for Christ. Certainly, Jesus didn't die on Calvary's cross that we could just gather regularly in this little huddle we call church on Thursday night 6.30 6.30 p.m. He died so that you could be saved and I could be saved and that we could tell people about Christ. In other words, we're not just 
digging a hole and burying the good news of salvation. We're going out and telling everybody about Christ. So what risk is God calling you? What risk has he put on your heart? I don't know. But you do. Maybe it's a career change. Maybe it's pursuing a family change, like adoption. Committing to a relationship. Kind of maybe starting your own ministry. Maybe it's just sharing Jesus with your neighbor. Assisting that person that you know is kind of hurting. Somebody who's down and out. Maybe it's personal, like trying to reorder your marriage. Or parenting. Or parenting can be tough. But trusting God to follow Him. Maybe it's the way you approach your job. You're going you're gonna to approach it with integrity. Maybe, ooh, this is a tough one. Maybe it's actually forgiving somebody that you know you need to. Been a long time. You know you need to forgive them. But maybe that's what God's calling you to do. Maybe it's going the extra mile to support a, a ministry. Could be here at Redeemer. Maybe it's another ministry that you're being called to, to give to. But every day, my friends, Jesus is calling out, saying, follow me. What will you do? Every day he's crying out to you, not for your salvation. You're saved. He died for your sins. We're going to celebrate that in the gift of communion here shortly. But you're living you're living in a world that's broken. People are passing away. The end is at hand. Quite frankly, I don't, I don't even know how long any of us are going to live. And so we want to take advantage of every moment we have to live. Live for today. Live for tomorrow. I guarantee you this. Nothing is more joyful than risky living. And by risky living, I mean giving it all. Being all in Christians. Nothing's more important. In fact, one last thought. Remember how Jesus ended so positively for the first two servants. The Master says in Matthew 25, Well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful over a little I will set you over much, much enter into the joy of your master. I think this is really encouraging for us Christians. First, there is a commendation. Christ says, well done. And secondly, there's even a promotion, if you will. He's saying, you've been faithful over a little, I will give you much. And, and I don't know exactly what all that much is. But third, there's a beautiful invitation. He says, enter into the joy of your master. My friends in Christ, that's his words to you, to me. One day Jesus Christ will say that to you and to me and to his devoted disciples. He will rejoice in the risk that you and I took to serve him. And he will invite you into that partnership for eternity. In fact, he's invited us into that right now to give us all. And I'm not going to pretend to know what that means. I will set you over much. I don't know. But I assure you, it's a good thing. All we know is that he's given us a little here on earth. A short lifetime. And he's asked us to be responsible. To be the best we can be. To be all in. In risky living. Risky giving. For Jesus Christ. In his name. Amen. Now may the peace of God. Which transcends all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds united in Christ. Amen. Our worship service continues with the prayers of the church. I would invite you to stand as you are able.
And let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, ruler of all, protect and defend your church from every attack of the devil who prowls and seeks to devour, where he tempts, strengthen your people to resist his seduction and terrors, where he gains a foothold with false teaching or ungodly living, call to repentance and holiness where he incites enemies against your word and your church. Preserve your saints in the faith that they may rejoice to share in the suffering of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless the work of our missionaries. Bring forth your harvest from the seeds they sow. Support those who endure fiery trials for your name as they shine the light of the gospel in hostile darkness. Guard them with the sign of your cross. Let them rejoice that in tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword, they share in your very suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you have saved us by your grace. And so we pray for the sick, the distressed, those whose hearts are heavy, those whose lives are burdened, those who mourn and who are in need. Especially, we pray for Steve Haskins, who uh, had heart surgery. For Marcy Gustman, who had open heart surgery as well. Carrie Cardwell, she's had been battling a, a bad infection, had a leg amputation. That's the niece of Andrea Van Pearson. For Bruce Timmons, who's doing much better as he recovers up at Unity. Vicki Eberly, who's also recovering nicely at Mercy. For Edward Pittenger, who's dealing with lung issues, that's the brother of Bev Baker. And for Cindy Kasky, her health, that's Rhonda Cameron's mom. We pray for the family of Anna Lamock. Grant them healing according to your will, strength and mercy according to your needs, and peace that passes understanding. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, your Son is both host and meal in the sacrament of the altar. Give us faith to recognize his body and blood and to receive with grateful faith this blessed food and holy communion. Guide us to live faithfully here on earth until we live forever with you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as the first Christians devoted themselves to giving, of their time, talent, and money. Preserve us in the same until we are raised with all the, sta the saints to your heavenly kingdom. Be with all those who celebrate a birthday and allow us the courage to engage in risky living and total devotion. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and continue with the offering.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Having revealed your glory in the face of your only begotten Son, who suffered, died, and rose for our salvation, you have exalted him to the highest majesty at your right hand, that he might graciously fill all things. Grant us faithfully to eat and drink his holy supper, trusting our reigning Savior Jesus, who, though unseen in his ascended glory, is here present to save by his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the glory and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament shed for you for the full forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you in true faith. Amen. Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We'll sing stanzas one and four. One and four. We're starting a study that follows that, and so you can either come 6.30 a.m. or 6.30 p.m. here to the church. So if your early risers come early, and maybe not quite that early, that's all right. Come a little later. That's, uh, that's fine. And then just a reminder that we have those baby bottles out there. They're really kind of uh, piggy banks, if you will. They are a fundraiser for Her Health Women's Center. And if you take these, I guess here's one right here, you just throw your coins, check, money in there, whatever, and then bring it back Father's Day or whenever, and it goes to support that ministry. That's about all the announcements I have, unless I missed any. Are there any that I have overlooked? If there are not, God bless your week. Mm -hmm. 